Hi, I'm Joseph Patrick Daniels, and today I'm going to show you a technique to drawing planes and some visualization tricks to get better drawings. If you found this video on YouTube, this exercise is part of a larger course I teach on traditional drawing that I've created for beginners, how to draw from beginner to master. It's available online on demand, so if you'd like to watch a preview of the course, just click the link below and it will take you to my site. Now that you have the outline of your subject drawn, you're ready to begin drawing the interior lines. But there's something important for you to recognize about one of the most common functions of interior lines. Interior lines are often where you'll begin to outline the planes in your image. Remember, in reality, there are no outlines around anything. So, when outlining a plane, your job is to make the outline no darker than the tones inside that shape. That's actually easier to do than it sounds. The trick is to draw all of your interior lines light at first. Here's what I mean, for example. This is a plane, this is a plane, and this is a plane. But notice, there are actually no defined lines around any of these shapes. So let's talk a little more about what a plane is. Planes happen when forms turn. Each plane on every image holds a value. Forms that belong to a single plane share similar values. Keeping values together in a plane is how an artist creates dimension on a flat surface. Planes help create dimension. You'll find this definition in your course glossary, by the way. The reason planes are so important, and one of the reasons why we work on the outlines first before drawing the planes, is because, as I mentioned earlier, if you look closely at this photograph, you'll see that there are no lines here. Images are mostly made up of planes and gradients, so it's important to place and outline your planes as accurately as possible. And that's why the second step in the drawing process is to both draw the interior lines and outline the planes. So this part of the exercise is still focused on practicing estimating angles and distances, but it's also designed to help you start learning to recognize and manage the various planes in your subject matter. So, for those of you who are working from your screen, you'll find a downloadable resource named 12-sided-dice-int.jpg in the course curriculum with the interior lines already drawn in for you to compare your lines to as you do the exercise. I'll just erase all of the dots I left in the margins from drawing the outlines to make this next part a bit less confusing. I suggest you do the same. So this time, rather than estimating one line at a time, I want you to use the surrounding information you've established in the outline to help you, and outline one plane at a time. Again, each one of these pentagons is a plane, so start by drawing the outline around this one individual shape, still looking for each line's angle one at a time, the way you did on the outline. Then stop when you've completed this shape and check your lines using the measurement technique. I'm going to use a pencil for this step because it's much easier to erase than charcoal. You're welcome to use a pencil as well for this part of the exercise because it's not teaching you anything specific about the medium. It's only focused on angles and distances. And I often use a pencil to do my preliminary drawings before adding charcoal anyway. And remember, I'm going to get this wrong. You're going to get this wrong because it would be unlikely for anyone to get this shape exactly right. Its shapes and angles are intentionally deceptive. It's meant to help you learn to isolate a line in your mind and draw it without allowing other lines in the shape to throw off your perception. Your vision can be difficult to rely on. It can play tricks on you if you don't know what to watch out for. Here's an example of what I mean. Look at the horizontal blue lines in this image. I think we can all agree that they're alternately sloping either up or down, correct? Well, look at what happens when I remove the checker pattern squares from the image. The lines are actually perfectly straight and parallel. Here's another example I give in my acrylic painting course. Take a look at these two leaning towers of Pisa. The one on the right seems to be more tilted than the one on the left, correct? What if I place this white bar here to help you break up the shapes? Some of you are seeing it now. 
What if I place these horizon lines to help you see it? Now watch what happens when I take the negative space from the first one and move it over to the one on the right. Now you can see they're actually on the exact same angle. It's a duplicate image. Your eye created an optical illusion, and that's why a lot of times you can't trust the image you're looking at, but you can trust your judgment of distances and shapes. My point is that, potentially, all images contain some form or another of visual deception, which means a lot of you have been doing drawings unaware of this effect, and more importantly, not knowing how to combat it while sketching, which is why many of you are here. I'm going to show you two tricks artists use to see an image and translate it into line art without being fooled by the various optical illusions hidden in it. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great tips on traditional drawing and painting techniques. And visit my online art school, the Beginner to Master Art Academy, if you'd like to preview the full course, as well as oil and acrylic painting courses for both beginners and experienced artists. Start your journey today.